Since Disney bought the Star Wars franchise in October 2012, there have been many additional Imperial ranks and insignias added to the original Imperial plaques, covered from the original movies. Although some say the ranks are just an uncoordinated set of costume designs, there is clearly a general structure, but the problem lies with the insignias between ranks, which have been issued, and the growing number included, depending on the Imperial branch, or even in which the production is set within the Star Wars timeline. For this second video in the series which reviews the Imperial military ranks, I wanted to explore more extensively over a rank plaque chart created by King Doran, published on Reddit, who very kindly provided their explanations to the chart's details from canon material. The chart covers the rank insignias from the formation of the Galactic Empire leading up to the Battle of Yavin, and the information is sourced mainly from Wikipedia, but also from Rogue One and the Solo Visual Guides related to David Crossman's chart which was intended to conform to John Mollo's system from A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. Insignias from Andor are also covered, which outlined some inconsistencies which conformed to Crossman's chart. Just as a call-out, double row rank plaques are included due to their appearance in Star Wars Rebels under the Branch Sector or Fleet Command Staff. Starting from the top of the chart, the Emperor of course is the highest commander of the entire military, and secondary to that was the leader of the Imperial Ruling Council, Masamida, and thirdly, the Emperor had his Imperial Advisors, including members of the Imperial Ruling Council. The Advisors were occasionally permitted to appoint a Grand Moff to an Oversector and a Moff to a Sector. However, appointing a Grand Admiral, in which only two ever were named in canon, could only be appointed by the Emperor himself, those being Thrawn and Ray Sloan. Additionally, the Emperor could only appoint a Grand General, in which also only two individuals have ever been named in canon, Cassio Teig and Kenner Loring. Its arrangement of the coloured tiles matched the equivalent rank of Grand Admiral. However, in the case of a Grand Moff or a Moff in canon, these insignias should have a different arrangement as the chart rightfully displays. For the next row down, the double row rank plaques of Fleet Admiral and Sector General have been aligned in this chart by the Sector Specific Design Schema in the Visual Guides. The double row ranks are interpreted as Navy Fleet Grade, or in the case of the Army, a Sector Grade Equivalent Officer of a higher class at the Imperial Academy. The evidence used for this was from Director Krennic's equivalent rank plaque to a Fleet Admiral of 6 red tiles over 6 blue. However, in this case, the rank of Sector General is there to act as the Fleet Admiral's Army Equivalent Grade. Although I myself feel this ranking canon could have been represented by 4 red tiles over 4 blue, but it's an interesting idea. The entire double or single row system will be taking an Imperial fleet and having all the fleet grade officers wearing double row rank plaques aboard a flagship or other important vessels or fleets, whereas for small patrol vessels or groups, these will be manned by standard naval officers, for example a small fleet, security vessels or navy command cruisers. The chart has attempted to incorporate all the named ranks from canon and align the visual ranks to the crossman's chart as best as possible. The next row of ranks represents the standard single row insignias for various Line, Operational, Security, Starfighter Corps and Stormtrooper Corps class of ranks. As accurately represented here, all Generals and Admirals held six tiles. The following two rows are a combination of Vice and Rear Admirals, Lieutenant Generals and Major Generals, who were also very senior officers holding key positions within the military prior to the Battle of Yavin. Although most insignias look recognisable from various characters I can think of, an odd occurrence with the Vice Admiral rank is in the case of Vice Admiral Rumpart, whose two blue and four red insignia in the Bad Batch appears to be with one blue and five red as opposed to a Rear Admiral, who does have a two blue and four red insignia. From my own knowledge, this is where it gets more confusing, as Admiral Motti from A New Hope also held two blue and four red while sitting on the Joint Chiefs as an Admiral. Moving swiftly on, the ranks below are the Colonel, Commodore, Lieutenant Colonel and Vice Commodore levels of insignias, although the ranks appear to be familiar from various Star Wars productions. One interesting spot for me here is the insignia for the unfortunate J-Hole Behaze as a Major General and the Army Operations Colonel Petigar from Andor. As we move further down the ranks, a whole collection of senior captains, majors, captains and lieutenant commanders make the chart understandably complicated with each branch of the military displaying multiple plaques for a mid-level type of officer. Although there are plenty of plaques which look familiar here and belong to various characters such as the ISB Captain Legret, Army Line Senior Captain Bragg and the Navy Line's Captain Corsin, as well as several other officers 
seen in Star Wars productions such as Captain Tigo from the Stormtrooper Corps and interestingly the naval security captain aboard the Campbell class Arresta cruiser from Andor. Further down the ranks were the insignias belonging to various grades of lieutenant including characters such as the Army Line's Lieutenant Gorn and the unidentified naval security lead lieutenant seen in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Other recognisable insignias here belong to the Lieutenant Junior Grade Officer seen in Rogue One and even the ISB's attendant Hurt from Andor who holds a comparable rank. But to round up the chart I think it's an excellent compilation of rank insignias across all various Imperial military branches and brings plenty of context to the different types of insignias and uniforms worn by officers of Star Wars productions to date. For more Imperial Explained videos please give a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and as always, long live the Empire.